right, guys, I am back. Sorry that it's been forever since I've uploaded. Life's crazy in a good way, I guess. You know, school, work, relationships, all that. It's going good, so just don't have a lot of time to work on or take videos of my Forerunner right now. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff has been done since my last videos that I've uploaded. Uh, so I kind of wanted to just do another full walk around so you guys can get an idea of what's, what's been done, what's new. It's still pretty budget friendly, but you know, over time you just keep adding stuff. So your budget stays the same, but over time you just buy bigger and better stuff. So I wouldn't say this is really a budget build anymore, but, um, I tried to do it as cheap as possible by doing all the work myself and sourcing parts that are cheaper but still good quality or even building parts myself so anyways we'll go over all that when we talk about the parts and the suspension and everything um, but yeah currently just driving home we're gonna find a spot to pull over so I can show you what's up Side note before we get into the walk around, um, just please make sure you're liking and subscribing to my channel. It's not really that big of a deal to me. I don't really care. Like I'm not an influencer. I just like to document what I have going on, but I'm almost monetized. So I think that's kind of like my goal for this year. I think it'll happen pretty soon, but I just need more subscriptions. I have the views and stuff. I just need subscriptions. So if you guys don't mind, like it's not the end of the world, but just try and subscribe if you're not already. Um, I also want to start making some merch and stuff. I don't know. I just need to decide what I want to do with this channel because I know it's enjoyable for people to watch. I enjoy making videos. I want to start doing more adventure videos as well. Um, but it's kind of, I just need to stay motivated and the way I can do that is by seeing people subscribing and interacting with my channel. But anyways, that's all I'm asking is just do a like, do a subscribe, comment, let me know how I'm doing. And hopefully we'll have some cool content and some merch maybe here pretty soon. But anyways, let's check out the truck. <laughs> all right, so the rear end here is out of an FJ Cruiser. I did that because it's got the E-locker. So a lot of people have been asking me why I haven't you know, done away with the eight inch rear end. Um, and really just comes down to, I got a good deal with this housing and everything. Um, I would have liked to gone with a Land Cruiser rear axle or something, but this is what I found and this is what I got. I think we beefed it up enough where it's gonna be pretty sturdy, but um, with the eight inch diff, you just gotta make sure you're not, you know, giving it the beans a lot on some trails, so. Um, and I've already broken the rear diff twice. So I kind of have an idea of what to look out for when I'm wheeling now with the eight inch. But yeah, some people don't really agree with the amount of work I've done to this and still keeping the eight inch, but I don't really care what other people think. So this will work for me. And if I break it, I'll swap it out. Eventually I want to do a straight axle swap with some, you know, one tons or something. So I don't know, but. Here's what we got, fully trussed, um, running 488 gears from Sierra Gear and Axle, running extended travel shocks that are triangulated for rock crawling. It's not the best on-road manners with this shock setup. It does give it a little more bounce than vertical shocks, but um, just with the way I had to mount them on the cross member, we had to do a more rock crawler setup, which is fine. It articulates really well. Um, let's move on. This is a radius arm setup. So as you can see here, we're running longer links up here. Here's the radius arm. And then we have it strapped. I haven't measured. 
um, the articulation yet, but pretty sweet. I'm running two inch spacers on the rear to compensate for the long travel. And then we're running the factory e-locker. It's out of an FJ Cruiser. So factory e-locker with the low range uh, harness. So that's pretty much it for the rear. Oh, the springs are out of a Bronco. They're like, I don't remember what series Bronco they are. It's one of the older 80s, like 1980s style Broncos, I think. They're a six inch spring with some of the Firestone um, airbags in it to help with the bounce. So they do squeak a little bit. These springs are like a dual rate spring too. So it makes it a little nicer, but it's still pretty bouncy. So yeah, that's the rear end. All right, so here we are at the front. Please don't laugh at me, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, there's probably two things right here that you're gonna be laughing at, um, but we'll talk about the whole setup and I'll kind of tell you what's going on. So this is a Depot Racing Plus Two Long Travel Kit. It's basically the All Pro kit. Um, this is just like a knockoff version of that. It has a few different tweaks here and there, but essentially it's an all pro kit. The installation is pretty much exactly the same as all pro. Um, so it's tubular control arms, upper and lower. Um, comes with the spindle gussets. And then it also comes with limit straps and all the... Uh, mounting hardware so that's what you get the kit was 900 bucks so very affordable for a long travel kit um pretty much what you're gonna need oh it also does come with tie rod extensions but i ended up going a different route so these are heimed outer tie rod extensions for the plus two as you can see we got the heimed outers there these things are super nice no more outer tie rods going out um, I can't remember when I start editing this video I'll put in a name brand of these I can't remember what they are off the top of my head but super happy with this I think it was like a hundred bucks for the set so that's what I'm running for steering and control arms um, taco tabs with the total chaos gussets game changer here guys i haven't had to well i was running the uh, taco tabs before i did the gussets and they were great but they still kind of slid around because my oem tabs were just beat to heck so i got the taco tabs alignment is dialed and i never have to mess with it again i can jump this thing wheel it hard the alignment's never going to shift on me and the taco tabs come with different tabs to kind of zero in your alignment depending on what setup you want so I have a neutral neutral front and then uh, I can't remember the exact measurement on the rear but it's the furthest out away from the frame so that gives me um, positive caster pushes it away from all this crap and uh, the control arms also kind of help get away from the body mount and stuff as you can see I've chopped that hammered a pinch weld it's not the prettiest job but it works and then as you guys probably noticed I'm still running my Bilstein 5100s with the pro comp springs and now a top hat spacer so what I decided to do was uh I went down a setting on my Bilsteins and and ran the top hat spacer. This is just temporary, but it gave me the height that I was looking for with the long travel. So now I'm just waiting for the time and money to put proper coilovers in here. Um, but these have held up great. I've had these since the beginning of my build and it kind of goes to show how versatile these 5100s are because it's gone through three different phases of my build and they're holding up great. And I, I wheel this thing pretty hard. I, I'm not like beating on this thing when I take it out, but they've held up nice. So, yep, shout out to Bill Steen. 
I'm, I'm a huge advocate for these things, but I think it's time to say goodbye to them to get some nice coilovers, get the right quality exactly how I want it. But um, yeah, that's what we got for suspension pretty much. Let's talk about the wrap and then some interior stuff. All right, before we move on to the wrap, let's talk about my axles. Obviously right now I'm running the Bluetooth axles. Really love them. They work great, don't make any noise. Um, but yeah, all jokes aside, I'm going to be trying my hand at doing some DIY plus two axle shafts. I've talked to numerous people that have done it in the race car world and everything, and I think uh, we'll be fine with running those. The ones that I want are back ordered, so um, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait for those to come in anyways, and I wanna get wheeling season started. So I'm gonna try my hand at doing some lengthened axles and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, anyways, super happy with the Bluetooth axles. Four wheel drive doesn't work that great though. All right, the construction guys are yelling at me to get out of here because apparently I'm not supposed to be taking video. So I'm gonna cut this short. Um, the wrap is from Cheetah Wraps. The color is Nardo Gray in gloss. It looks really sweet. I really like the color. It's really close to Toyota cement. Um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty resilient to some trail rash. The nice thing about the gloss is you can kind of polish it. You don't want to like cut into it, but you can do a nice wax and a polish and everything on top of it. Running some vinyl stickers. This week's Wander, baby. And these are all the uh, brands that I'm supporting right now with this phase of the build. So yeah, I think that's about it for the exterior. I'm gonna get out of here because I got kicked out, but we'll talk about the interior while I'm driving. Yeah, the freaking he must be some like manager or something. He just came up to me. I'm like obviously taking videos and pictures. He's like, oh, what do you think you're doing up here? I'm like taking videos. Like this is an empty lot. He's like, oh, well we got all the management out here. They're gonna be throwing a fit if you're up here. So I figure it's time for me to take off. But this used to all just be a gravel pit. I used to come up here and mess around all the time. But anyways, so yeah, that's about it for exterior. Um, I'm gonna find another spot to just pull over and we'll talk about the uh, interior. But if there's anything I missed, or if you guys have questions about anything, just let me know. Like, I'm gonna start making more shorter videos just explaining certain parts of the build because I've done a lot of stuff, but I've been very bad at documenting it. So I feel bad that I'm not, you know, explaining things properly or fully to you guys. But yeah, that's pretty much the suspension setup. Wheels and tires are the same since last video. Um, what else? Interior is pretty much the only other thing that I've changed up. So I'm gonna pull over right here and show you what we're looking at. All right, so here's what we got for the interior. Super dirty, I apologize, but I'm running a five gang switch. The switch panel is off Amazon. I made this mount myself, just bolted it through and cut a hole for the wires. Um, so that's super nice. I'm running LEDs up here. I kind of want to switch this whole thing out with a different setup, but it works. Then I got my key back for my CB. I really like this. This is like a dash cam reverse um, mirror. So I need to tuck these wires up a little better, but this records front and rear video and audio. Plus it's a full time reverse camera you can switch so got my front camera which is just my 
dash cam. Then you got a split view. And then you just have your rear and you can kind of adjust it. Um, but that helps, especially with the tire carrier and my windows blocked out. This really helps with the view. Um, what else? Got this super cool um, cup holder that I designed and 3D printed. If you guys want the file to this, I can upload it, but you better be subscribed. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Just kidding. If you guys want it, I'll put a link. Um, but yeah, honeycomb design. If you guys do want to print this, print it face down on the build plate. Um, start it off with a different color filament. And then once it finishes the honeycomb, switch your filament and that's how you get the dual color. And then you just have to pick out the uh, supports from in here. But it looks pretty good. My only complaint with it is it fits nice, but when you have a tight fitting cup, sometimes it sticks to it like that and pulls out. So I either need to make the tolerance here a little tighter or just like glue it in or bolt it in somehow. And then run in a pedal commander. Doesn't add horsepower, just changes your shift points and throttle sensitivity. So that's nice, especially right now, I run it on eco mode and it actually saves me some gas because I tend to romp on it a little more than I should. Got my switches over here. This is the low range uh, e-locker kit. I custom made this shifter out of some excess resin from work. Um, yeah, I think I already went over these. patches i don't know what else guys that's about it but hope you hopefully you enjoyed today's video um nothing special just going over the current build if you guys have any questions or i didn't go over anything that you want um just hit me up in the comments or on instagram and if there's enough people that want to see i'll just make a full video on that but yeah i'm really enjoying the build at this stage it's got a lot of potential just waiting on a few finishing touches um, but yeah, thanks for checking it out guys. Make sure you're liking and subscribing. That's all I ask for and hopefully I can give back do some merch Maybe some trail rides. I don't know. I don't really have a following. I'm not an influencer. I just like to make videos so We'll figure that part out, but thanks for checking it out and take it easy